Good morning, everybody, and welcome along to this edition of uh, Lear Confidential on LearMedia.tv. And uh, we have an email for the program. If you want to make any comments, it's email uh, the info at LearMedia.tv. I'm delighted to have Councillor Ken Smullen back with us again. Ken has been on with us, just, as we were remarked before we came on here, so over six months, but as we say, the times we're in, Ken, every day is almost the same as every other day now. You know something, Ken? I was thinking coming in this morning, there's a marked difference in people since the last time I spoke to you, certainly down around here, the d deterioration in their mental well-being, their, even their physical health, and even the, in the country in general, is just appalling. I notice it myself because I'm out every day, you know? I don't know about you up around where you are. Ken, Councillor Ken Smullen, I must say, is a councillor in County Offaly for all our listeners coming to this for the first time. Anyway, good morning, Ken. Good morning, and, and thank you very much, Pat, for having me on again. And uh, I, it's hard to believe that it is actually six months or, or thereabouts since, since I was last on. But you were talking about people not knowing um, that every, every day seems to be like the others. I was talking to a, a, a mother of a number of children last night and um, her, one of her children, uh, her, the birthday is today. And she actually thought it was the day after tomorrow, like that was last night. So she didn't realize it was today because now she is suffering um, tremendously um, because they're locked in and there are people close to them, living close to them that have COVID. They're afraid to let the kids out. They won't even let the kids go to school even though a couple of them could be going to school. But um, people just don't know. A, a Sunday is the same as a Wednesday now to a lot of people. Just days don't seem to matter. They just roll into each other and people have no idea what day it is even. Now, uh, I, I was reading a few bits and pieces about you, about uh, this uh, the motion that um, I think when you spoke at that uh, county council meeting, you echoed an awful lot of what people are saying. First of all, we are tired and tired, I am tired, this is my own personal opinion, of listening to figures here and figures there and lock down this county, lock down that county. There is no uh, uh, appreciation uh, of people doing the best they can. It's not reflected in the day-to-day -day conversation of how horrendous the sacrifices people are making. And when you spoke at that county council meeting, I mean, it's it's not rocket science. If if the authorities know where these hotspots are of the breakouts, it will uh, inform the local people. To say, look, we will not go there or, or whatever. Ken, I think that's what you were getting at, was it? Yeah. Well, look, Pat. I I will always and probably to to, to my detriment, I will always say say what I I feel. I'm not going to hide anything. Um, I try to do my very best and to do it right by people because, you know, I, I owe people a lot because they put me in my position and I'm not just here, um, you know, unfortunately, most politicians, when they get elected, their, their main job is to, to look down the, the years to four or five years to get reelected. Like that doesn't concern me. Um, I, I want to do the best I can for people. I have five young grandchildren now at this stage and, um, I want them growing up in, in a world that's better than the one we're in right now. And what I said at last week's um, Offaly County Council meeting, I believe that the, the wool has been pulled over our eyes. There, you know, Offaly County Council issued a, a press release um, the night before last, um, and it just does not bear any semblance, semblance to, to uh, reality on the ground as far as I'm concerned. And I did contact council management to say that I wanted to be disassociated from that um, press release because it, it just is, is not its political spin and uh, everything is grand and thanking everybody for making things better and, and uh, we're all heading in the right direction. When, when the reality is that it, here in Offaly in particular, the situation is actually getting worse. We are by far the highest. We're twice as high as the second highest county of Longford. We are in a serious situation. Now, I don't want to see the people of County Offaly and the businesses um, closed down and being on our own, left in level five. And we heard Nevitt the other night saying that possibly the, with further restrictions placed on us. Now, they're, they're talking about the highest areas, but that, that includes Offaly and probably only Offaly. 
Um, whereas nothing really has been is being done to cure the situ situation. Now, I have asked uh, all of these organizations, I've asked Offaly County Council at, at, at last Monday's Offaly County Council meeting, I asked that they liaise with the HSC and NEFID in order to pinpoint these locations. Now, I'm not trying to, um, you know, name and shame anybody. First of all, you know, there is no shame. Any one of us could, could catch this disease. Of course, it doesn't yeah. matter how rich or poor we are, we're, we're all susceptible to this thing. So we yeah. really are all in this together. But I don't want people named, but I do want locations named. If it's a factory that, that this outbreak is in, well, then name that factory and let people know uh, in that area because they yes. will be more careful and people um, employed there and their families will be more careful um, mm -hmm. because right now we're all suffering from COVID fatigue and you can see it on the streets. The lock, level five lockdown now is a lot different than it was this time last year. There are loads of cars on the streets. There are loads of people on the streets. There are people on, on the streets drinking coffee and you will see, unfortunately, a lot of people not wearing masks or taking the appropriate protections. And then again, we have so many people out there who are spreading the word that this isn't a real virus and, and that it's all some kind of a, a government conspiracy. And, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff that, sadly, a lot yeah. of people are taking note of. But we have to get the message out there to people. We need to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I personally know um, a, f a few people that, you know, two people that died, and I knew them personally. Um, I know people right now who are ill with COVID. I know people that are seriously ill with COVID. And, you know, we just have to... You know, actually, since I spoke to you last, I lost my own mum in November. She was oh, 91. She was in a nursing home. I'm sorry so, to hear that, Pat. Oh, no, no. Uh, it was, uh, she was uh, uh, suffering from severe dementia, came sort of crater. It was a, a loss and a relief, you know, just seeing yeah. more. Creator, yeah. you know, a, a yeah, great, we don't want uh, to see them suffer, you know, uh, absolutely. And of course, she was in a nursing home and, and faced all the challenges that everybody in a nursing home does. But I think myself, one thing that could ease our fatigue of, of COVID is that our national broadcaster should not have Neffet on two days a week, seven days a week, telling us all this nonsense. I think that once a week would be insufficient for them. They are not the government, and the problem with frustration of people, people are perceived, have the perception now that those two or three people are running the country. And that is a wrong optic for me and for all the citizenry. We know what to do, we've got the message. There'll always be an element that won't do anything, no matter what you say, or then, 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 then handcuffing them. But yeah. so I think, that the people from Neffet should stay off the airwaves from a daily basis because there's huge challenges for people and this does not help their mental health, in my opinion. No, the, the, the mental health of the general population is, is really um, going downwards. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to see this over the next few years. We're not really going to see it, it now uh, for our, and for the next few months, but people are really... Um, they're going, a lot of people are in a bad place right now, um, you know, and, and, and even when an ordinary funeral happens, you know, it doesn't have to be someone that died with COVID or from COVID, um, you know, to, to allow 10 people uh, into a church, there's something radically wrong with that. If you go to a supermarket after being at that funeral, you know, you'll see hundreds of people in the supermarket, people leaning over each other and it just look. It I, I was I was at a funeral recently, and I, I just went to the cemetery because um, it, it was a close, uh, somebody close enough, and um, I still can't get it into my head that that person is actually gone. And you know, I'm I'm saying it here for the first time. I actually, even though I wasn't that close to that person, I actually went to the cemetery again only last week. The person died three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Just to convince myself that that person was actually there in the cemetery. You, you'd almost be expecting that person to see that person on the street again. And if you did see that person on the street again, you wouldn't be surprised. You'd say, oh, yeah, Jesus. You know, it, it, <laughs> yeah. In my own case, my mum, I mean, it was shocking. I mean, there was nine, eight of us there. And it, 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 I mean, if we had to head here to the tent to be 
madness, but slightly old, but huge church. No one inside it. After spending her 91 years, years, not because she was my mum, was a stalwart to the community. Yeah. It was a shocking indictment of where we are. And you said there's thousands and thousands of people going through our supermarkets every day, and we can only have 10 people in it. This is the first stage. We went to the graveyard and there was almost as many under the coffin as there was inside in the graveyard. It was, it's a yeah. shocking indictment of the way people are being treated. It's, it's absolutely really, terrible. It's really just discrimination at this stage. At the this problem stage. is, Pat, that we have, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, um, because I don't like to, you know, I don't force my opinions on anybody. Everybody's entitled to an opinion and everybody's yeah, entitled to criticise me and, and say that I'm wrong and I, I will engage with those people too. Um, but in, in my opinion, we have a leaderless government. We have a directionless government. Um, you know, we have more and more people are beginning to have no faith in this government. Of course, you're going to get the, the stalwarts that will s support and follow them through thick and thin, no matter what they do. But more, more and more people are just have total disrespect for the government and for politics in general. They just see every politician out there as someone that, that just wants to, you know, fleece the country for everything that's possible. Whereas I know that that's not the case. There's a lot of them like that, but there are some very decent um, politicians out of there. Of course there are, yeah. And, and yeah, they're, they're, they're being silenced. They are. And you know, what I can't understand, I heard a bit of, I normally don't listen to them in the morning, but I was on my way in. I heard Pascal O'Donoghue on one of the stations talking about easing restrictions and all of this nonsense. Now, I cannot understand, Ken, how come an off-license just across the road from us here where we are in Limerick is an essential service and the barber shop next door is not? Yeah. It, it, you riddle it me that one now. Yeah, it just does not make sense. Um, we know women in particular, um, you know, a lot of women need to get their hair yeah. done and, and, and it's an outlet for them. Um, after a tough day at home, work, working at home, and, and they, they need that social contact with the hairdresser and with the other people that might be there. It just doesn't make sense to me um, that that people, you know, that these things are happening and we're being clamped down on this. While there's so much more happening, while there's thousands of people coming through our airports, and that, you know, we know that they're talking about clamping down on that now. Um, but there's twelve thousand people came in there a couple of days ago to Dublin Airport. Yeah, it, it, look, are it, it just me, does not... Are you going to tell me, Ken, that they're all self isolating for 14 days? Yeah, it, it, look, it, it it just does not make sense. None of it no. makes sense. They're, no. they're being told. And, and you're, you, you know, if you ask that question, the answer will be, well, it's an offence if they don't. Well, so bloody what if it's an offence? It doesn't mean they're going to abide by the rules or by the, no. the restrictions. You know, these people are coming in. And, you know, it was reported only during the week there, that I think there was 34,000 people came through Dublin Airport over um, the, the period of two weeks, and that most of them were actually visiting or on holiday. Yeah. You know, and yet 10 people are allowed to go to a church. People are being locked in. What's happening in our nursing homes is absolutely criminal. It's wrong that our people be treated like that. These are elderly people who have worked yeah, yeah, hard yeah. all of their lives. They've built this country, and now we're allowing them to be treated like that. I think it's absolutely wrong. Yeah, and the prisoners, uh, not Antigua's prisoners in Mount Joy, have more rights than the senior citizens in our nursing homes. Exactly, yeah. You know? It's, it's, it's yeah, just it's, wrong what's happening. It's just shocking. And uh, about the airports, don't stop me in the airports. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think there's a huge frustration now with people 12 months on, we were told, 12 months ago almost, as you know yourself, Ken, where yeah. lockdown flattened the curve and stay at home. We opened up lockdown, put on masks and keep wearing masks and flattened the curve. Uh, vaccination came, we got vaccinated. We're still locked down, wearing masks, vaccinated, washing hands, social distancing. And yes, it's a virus. We'll have to live with it. We'll have to decide someday as a country to say, okay, guys, we're opening up the country. We have to live with this. Anybody who's susceptible to this, stay at home and take and the rest of you off. Uh, live yeah. your life. Life is for living, not for misery, in my opinion. And I think it's time to change tack myself and open up businesses because it's 
not alone physically killing people, the horrendous deaths I've heard from my own part of the country of suicides is shocking. And I was talking to another uh, county man of your own just on the phone. I won't mention his name now on this programme. He was telling me two of his friends. We were talking about people now in their late 50s, early 60s who committed suicide. And yeah. the man I was speaking to on the phone was just distraught. You know, lives. It, it will take a generation, even if this thing ended next week. It will take a generation. Now, when I talk about a generation, we're talking about 20, 30, 40 years to recover from this because the mental stress and, and trauma that people are feeling now isn't just going to go away. This is going to affect people for the rest of their lives, yeah. um, you know, and, and what they've gone through and, and what their families have gone through and the people they've lost and without being able to properly grieve for those people. You know, last year, um, I, I remember, you know, you'd be listening to the... Um, the deaths on, on, on the, the list of deaths on the radio and they'd be saying that well uh, we will have some sort of a, a memorial or commemoration or whatever of that person's life uh, once COVID is over but, you know COVID is not over and th th those people will just be forgotten and the families yeah. will be there left to think nobody remembers my dad or my mom or, or my yeah. brother or sister or my child or whatever and it, it's 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 taking a huge toll on it people's is. life. And as you said, people are actually dying because they're taking their own lives yeah. out of absolute total desperation. I know, and I see my own dad now, thank he's still healthy. He's 90. He's living at home with my brother's looking after him. Well, he's physically fine and all. He's just old, that's all, thank God. And he's Good. healthy. I, I noticed at the funeral at the time, I mean, he couldn't, I mean, if, if there were more people allowed, you know, more familiar faces, you'd have yeah. death kind of support which was missing from it you know which is yeah i'm speaking to councillor ken swollen here on their confidential from county after now ken i noticed myself even in shannon where i live there's a food bank every thursday now i never noticed when i knew it was there sorry i knew it was there and there's some fantastic people staffing it in our voluntary level but i decided myself Thankfully, I don't need it myself yet. <laughs> one, one can never be sure. And um, I was only I was going up to the town centre for um, on another thing, and I just swung by where it was. Gosh Almighty, Ken! The amount of people availing of that. I I don't know you. I know you have the, your own charity as well, uh, the KS yeah. Food Appeal Charity, which is doing phenomenal work in the whole Midlands area, Ken. How do you find it? Has, has the need for this kind of thing um, increased? Or how yes. do you find it? No, it, it is increasing, um, Pat. No, I have to say it's, it's, it's increasing slowly at the moment. Um, right now, as of this morning, we have um, 939 families on that list. Um, but I've no doubt, give this a few months, um, when there and are... how does it work? Do, do, you, do you, just in nuts and bolts, do you, do people, like, if I was one of those families that contacted you up there now in, in the Midlands, would you, the charity, deliver to my house, is it? Or would I go somewhere and collect it? Or how does it work? It's up to the people themselves. Um, I actually deliver to people's homes. Um, I, I start off very early each morning, especially since this COVID outbreak. And if I don't have the, the button on the kettle pressed in the morning at half past four, well, then I'm late um, oh because, because I want to get off the road by about half past nine because I, I want to protect my own family, myself. Of course. Um, of course. And, and I certainly do not want to meet people for me to pass something on to them, something that I might have that's not affecting me. None of us know we have this, but I, I deliver to those people's homes. I leave the bag outside their door or I leave it inside the gate or whatever. Um, but those people, you know, and even the people that help me on this, they have no idea where I go with this. I, I guarantee people total confidentiality because there is an awful feeling of shame and embarrassment with well, people. And the very fact is that no matter how long this goes, 
we're never going to get to the vast majority of people that are experiencing food poverty. And that's what I'm trying to instill into people that not one person other than myself will ever know that you have received help. Um, you know, there's no markings on my van and there won't be. And I call very late at night or very early in the morning. Well, I, you know, d these are things I'd never think of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think about, and of course, you have to forward plan for all of that. Well, you do. Well, you see, that that's why, the, you know, the, 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 the largest charity in the country and it's government funded as well. Um, people are not contacting that charity because... They will send in two volunteers to um, see what the situation is. And they're basically judging people and judging their, their way of life. And people are being asked, well, why, are, why have you got Sky channels or why have you got so many channels? Why, uh, is, your, why is your hallway clean? If your hallway yeah. is clean, you know, you're, you're not poor enough um, to get help. And if they are poor enough to get help, then we'll send this to a meeting next week. And then you'll hear from us the following week. Now, that means it's two weeks. If somebody contacts me today, it means they're hungry today. It means that they need help today. And I get to them as soon as I possibly can. Now, and thankfully, I have a few teams are, are around the Midlands now that are doing this, something similar. And I also have another gentleman that's actually delivering food to me. But I contacted each one of those families and I asked them if it was OK. A lot of families said no, they'd rather that nobody else knew but some of the families that said, yes, it's OK, well, that I, I have given those to another man to actually deliver on my behalf. Yeah. And you're right there about people. I mean, for me to pick up a phone to a food charity is a huge, huge, huge embarrassing thing for me personally as a human yeah. being. And then if the people at the other side of the phone are not being judgmental, they probably don't have an appreciation of that in the beginning. And as you said, if they come out to my house, that's a double whammy for me. That, yeah. mean, that means that I want to contact them again. Not okay. because of a judgmental fact on their part. I can understand why they need to ensure that thing. But to me, I think it's very simple. If I pick up the phone to KS Food Appeal, it always invariably means I'm in desperate situation. Yeah. To be a double whammy is just because I spoke to a man probably two months ago now. I just met him and I know him for a while and um, he lives on his own like myself and we're chatting away and he said, Kat, I had to phone, he didn't, I won't mention the charity, I had to phone so-and-so and he said I had to look for food Come uh, Sunday evening, I had no money and I had no food yeah. in the house, and I had no way of getting it. Yeah, look, now, look uh, um, see, you see, this, this whole see, thing is a—it's it, an extremely, um, it's a, an extremely complex thing, and you know, every day, even for for, for me, I'm, I'm I'm at it for the last five years now, but I learn something new every day about yeah. how people feel about this thing and and why people are not making contact. Um, if you phone the, that, that, that charity I was talking about today, you'll be talking to Tom, Mick, Mary, Harry, or John. And, and if you phone them the following day, because you've heard nothing from them, um, you'll be talking to a diff you know, different people. And the problem is that the volunteers with that charity are all local people. So therefore, somebody in your locality knows that you're poor, knows that you need help, and knows that you have rang looking for help with food. That turns people off completely uh, because they will not want anyone to know. And I have been asked, I was contacted by the, the, um, the rehab group asking me what my thoughts were on, on having a, a food bank in Tullamore. And I immediately said, no, it wouldn't work because in Dublin, you can be very, or in the larger centres. Um, I'm not even sure about Limerick because Limerick and Galway wouldn't be large enough. But um, in, in Dublin, you can be anonymous. And you if you can be up, anonymous in Dublin. Yeah, if, if, you, there, if yeah. you queue up for food, well, the, the odds are that nobody you know is going to see you or nobody you know is going to know that you need help. But in the likes of Tullamore, if you go into a food bank, people will see you. No matter what you do, 
people will see you. And that's what terrifies people. They don't want to be seen by anybody. No, no. You know, no. And, and, that's, and that's where I'm coming from. I go to them. All I need is their trust because, you know, it's almost me pleading with them to come forward and look for help if they need help. Because it horrifies me to know that there are hundreds of thousands of people out there. I, I, I used to operate on, on research that was carried out by two trade unions, Mandate and Unite, who said in, from research in 2013 that there were 600,000 people on our island that didn't have enough food to eat. Well, in 2018, late 2018, there was research carried out in NUIG. And um, I was contacted by a man that was involved in that. He's actually the grandson of the former minister for health. And right. he told me that... Um, Ken, your figures are wrong. It's now 750,000 plus people that don't have enough food to eat on our island, and half of that number are children. So that's what horrifies me. I, I'm not even scratching the surface of this. Um, and no charity, all the charities put together, we're not even scratching the surface of this thing because people are going hungry purposely in order that their kids are fed, and women in particular. I know women that are going without food purposely for one day or two days or even three days a week, just so they can feed their kids. And, you know, since this COVID, it has made the problem worse because there were places I know in my own city where I'm from originally in Cork City, you had the penny dinners going back to the 1950s, yeah. where anybody can walk in for their breakfast, can walk in for their lunch and their supper in there every day of the week. They were yeah. running it now because of this, that's gone. Yeah. And so therefore the problem is, has to be huge and much, much bigger. And I think you're dead right about food banks. I think they're an absolute blight, a blight yeah. on our, uh, in our country or in any country, food banks, because the last thing I'd do if I was in that situation is to go to a food bank. Yeah, exactly. Because well, you, you will be seen and, and, and People, Do people not sense. think of the dignity of the human being at all when they're doing these things? That is the problem, Pat, because I, I think not enough research by people who care enough has been done. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy for these larger charities to see. And, and they'll go around with that, that, that their emblems on the side of the van, their vans. And, I know. know. And, and they'll stop outside people's houses. And immediately that family is, is, is known as the family that gets help from that particular charity. And I think that's so wrong. And I see them in Limerick as well at night with do selling work, the volunteers do selling work. They pull up and it's a takeaway now. They have soup, they have sandwiches and a hot stew, you know, which is fantastic for people who need a hot meal. People around the streets. But that's different than Young families, the challenges facing young families now, uh, I look, I don't even want to bear thinking about it. I, I know I live on my own frugally as I can, yeah. but I know people, uh, I know a good few people in Shannon who are in dire straits continuously, and the, the COVID lockdown is decimating the communities. I know, I'm, I'm sure, Ken up in Tull I haven't been in Tullamore, obviously, for obvious reasons, but a long time now, even passing through at one time. But um, should the businesses that have closed down there now, the shutters down, I mean, the the, the challenge for Tullamore and all towns like it, even my own town back in Mallow, is some of those, will, we, you and I both know that they won't open again. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And, and that, Banks, that, bank, bank benches are closing right, left and centre. Yeah. There's a friend of ours living outside Templemore and the bank is gone. The bank will be gone. Yeah. Can you just imagine that? People with pensions. Be, I don't know, Ken. Are we going back? Are we going backwards? Well, I only heard this morning that the PTSB bank in Tullamore is um, they're they're losing all of their staff now. That is just going. The, the building will still be there, and you just go in and talk to a machine basically, and you deal with your your your, your cards. You know, it, it's it, look. It, the whole thing is wrong. It's just wrong. It no. be to get it back. Yeah. Getting back. So getting back to the uh, motion or the thing in, in African Council, I mean, obviously I read that press release in full, you know, mm -hmm. I read it every night and I, and, and I read your letter as well. 
And what kind of response did you get from, from the county manager? Um, do you want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> I, I, got, I got no response. None whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Um, now, there is a meeting being held today at 4 p.m. I just found that out um, a half an hour before we got an email sent to the councillors. Yeah. And um, there is a meeting between the, 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 the council, council management, the HSE, and the Cahirlux of each of the municipal districts in Offaly. In other yeah. words, all of the councillors won't be there. Um, you know, I won't be there, even though I was the only one that raised this uh, subject. It's, look, it's, it's, there's a, a myriad of problems here because it, it goes to show how the political system works in this country. Um, you know, I'm supposed to email my questions to the Cahirlock of my municipal district, expecting that he asked those questions. Whereas if I was there, I would ask the questions, the relevant questions. And, depend, and the, depending on the answer I got, I would have more questions. But, but why wouldn't they have it for the, all the councillors to go to? Pat, your guess is as good as mine. As far Honestly, as I'm concerned, they, they, they could have done this via Zoom or whatever else. Um, but, but, but it's not being done that way. Um, look, the, you, you read, you read the uh, press release itself, and I presume... You know, you, you took from it what I took. It's, it was just nonsensical. It was crazy stuff. And yeah, somebody, no, has, no, and somebody has actually pointed out to me only this morning that they actually issued the very same press release last July. So this was just a copy and paste job. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. They're trying to fool the people of Tullamore and Offaly into thinking everything is wonderful. There's no need to worry. And, you know, there are some counties um, uh, that don't have any uh, deaths or cases now for a yeah. while. But what about those? Are they, I mean, I, I can't, I've lost, I've lost the will to analyse stuff anymore because if the figures are telling you that it's X, Y, and Z and the, the line, the official line on these things are in, are in direct opposite to that. Surely there's head scratching going and said, we cannot go on like this. Please open up the country and let people have the intelligence and the wit to take their own precautions then if they're in certain categories of people. Yeah. Leave the businesses open. Yeah, look, the, the, whole, look, the, the other side of that would be that um, the, 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 the workers in those businesses might not be happy to be um, in those situations. Um, we'd say people in retail, um, the, the workers in their staff in there, the people who serve customers, they might not be happy to be, uh, to, to have their families open to this virus. Um, yeah, but there, there, multiple, multiple no answer. Yeah, but, but Ken, Tesco's and Dunn's, Lidl and Aldi have been open continuously since this started, right? Mm. There has been no major outbreak in the staff of COVID. None. Yeah. None whatsoever. No. And yet they're meeting thousands of people every week in their store. You see, Pat, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't been told about any. Like, I do certainly believe that there is a virus out there. But unfortunately, I, but unfortunately I, I, I don't trust that this government has the capacity to actually give us real figures. <laughs> I, I, you know, they're, they're coming up with figures and we hear they're talking about debts from February and debts from January and, debt, and some debts from December. Yeah. You know, and I know it takes some time, you know, with postmortems and everything else, um, but it surely doesn't take that long to release this information. No, um, you know we know. I know my own mom. My, my, I know yeah. my own did not die from COVID. You know, yeah, me yeah. you know, our, our own doctor told us. I know she did not. You know, yeah, it's any consolation, but it is to me. Yeah, know, of course, yeah. It's important to know these things, you know. And yet, we could all go in and see her when she was dying. But we couldn't go in and see her when she was alive. Yeah, that that that's it. it look, it's it, it, it just. Died. 
our it's system. wrong. It's it's wrong. It's 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 all wrong. It's insane. And the, a time will come when there will be a, a major investigation into all of this. There will be tribunals about this, and um, people will be yeah. you know we, we'll hear that such and such was done wrong, and, and that the behavior of, of certain government officials or whatever in, in the HSE or NEFET or whatever was, was wrong. But, you know, we're going through it now. And it's very easy to see why people have this, this, this COVID fatigue, because we are all browned off of no, having no real direction. We're waiting for the next big date now, the 5th of April. We have no well, idea I, what they're going to I mean, do or what they're going to say. I mean, when we're finished this program here now, I can go into Aldi, I can go into Super Value, I can go into Tesco's, I can go into Dunn's, but I can't get my hair cut. Yeah, it, it, it's, to, it's totally... Well, it's like this, Pat, I'm looking at you there now, and you must have somebody doing something with your hair, because... <laughs> oh, Joe, by Jesus, I tell you, I've got a bit of sellotape on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a month ago, I got my grandson to cut my hair, and I think this week again, I'll be I'll, I'll be getting him again to do the, the job again. <laughs> but it, it, it's shocking, and we, and we can laugh at it now, you know. It, and it, it's I, know, it. I know, but but you know, we can, and we have to see the bright side of this because if we don't, we we can't go around spreading doom and gloom. Um, no, I see. Yeah, people, you're right. People need people like you and myself and others to actually boost them up because. That's right. Look, you know, we, we need to I give can, people some I can, hope. I can, you have to maintain a routine. I know yeah. it's not, it's, it's more easier to said than done. I mean, you have a purpose. You have things to do every day, like myself. You have to maintain a routine, you know, uh, in, in your daily life. No matter what it is, if it's getting up at the same time every day and going for a walk, just have some kind of a positive routine and meet people. You know, I have, I, I'm, I'm lucky in that I have Five or six very good friends we can hang around together. They're all living their own, so we're be, we've been like that since the start. Yeah. So we we're a good su- network of support for each other as well, which yeah. is important for people, you know. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Well, it's like this, Pat. I I do meet people uh, every single day, and I do my best, uh, as they do, to keep our our distance. But yes. the one thing that we always, no matter who it is, I meet. I always have a laugh and a joke with them because it's important to keep the spirit up in people because being, you know, with doom and gloom, we're just going to get nowhere. No, no. I mean, hopefully the sporting activities and all the other things will come into train in the next month or two, you know. Uh, Look, stopping people from playing golf and pitch and putt, even though I play neither, but that just does not make sense to me. That's daft altogether now. I must, I don't agree with you. Totally crazy. It just does not make sense. I know, that's out in the fresh air and and you won't be exactly tripping over each other, you know. No, absolutely Contrast that with with the rugby match last uh, last weekend, the rugby matches, and they all top team players flying off each other and yeah, exactly. You know, really? and, we, and we know those people actually go home to their families then, and their families then meet other people as well. So, you know, what's the sense in it? Yeah, um, well, no. uh, as you said, I think it's obvious for you and I, uh, and the listeners can draw their own conclusion to this. We know that many things can do not make sense. If something doesn't make sense to me, you'll either ridicule it or ignore it. Yeah. You know? If a directive doesn't make sense, and if it's not for everybody, these directives, like the farcical five kilometers, I if that's not a, a, a directive that is for every single person, then the people who are expected to, to police it, so to speak, they won't be able to do it because everyone knows it's not for everybody. Yeah, look, Pat, um, you know, I, I've spoken to a lot of guards on, on different checkpoints and the guard here confused as well. You know, they don't want to be on the streets there because they really see this as directionless as well. They, they, they don't see any reason for it or the purpose for it. And, you know, and, and the morale in, in Angarda Shiakana is bad enough without treating them like that and putting them on the streets and most, demanding most that they ask. Most guys would use our comments and say, look. Of course, yeah. This is completely nuts. I'm not yeah. saying and just saying that out loud, but they can see if you have a ball time in your car. They can see if you have no tax, yeah. no consequences. But the idea, 
Are you five or six kilometers from your house? How can you police it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's nuts. It sounds like something that came from the, the, the local council of Killing Scully. <laughs> or Bally okay. Magash years ago. Yes. <laughs> Before we finish up, Ken, for this is and delighted to have you on again, you know, and, and no, people, who not alone are, are a rock of sense because people, Council Ken Smolin is our guest from uh, Tullamore, and Ken has a food, KS food charity as well, which is doing fantastic work in the Midlands area, you know. And uh, I've been reading about some, was it some shop in Roscommon? Some, was it Deals? Deals oh. in Roscommon are the latest. De- deals in Tullamore were the first Deals outlet. Um, they, I, I collect an awful lot of food from, from there. And it's, it's people, their customers that are making those donations there. And now Deals in Mullingar are doing the same. Deals in Athlone are doing the same. Um, and, and Deals you'll in Roscommon. You'll have to get another one or two van drivers. <laughs> Well, yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. You see, my, my life has taken up now completely between the, the food appeal and council work because I have a lot yeah. of council work to do. And, I, you know, things are going to change this year. They have to change because uh, I'm busier. I'm, look, I wish there was 25 hours in the day. I know. think, like yourself, if you want someone to do something, ask a busy man. Exactly. Exactly. It's really true. Isn't yeah. it? I know it's all I was saying, but it's really true, actually. You know, it is. Really it is. True. And I'll tell you one thing, Pat. It's it's absolutely fa- a fantastic feeling to know that uh, you you have done something for somebody and they really appreciate it. For instance, I got a message from a you know a family this morning who um you know uh, they they have a home and they have a forever home um this morning and I have been fighting for that for for the last six months. But this oh, yeah. morning they got the, the, the word that they have that now. And, and they were so grateful. And that's a fantastic feeling. And, and just Gosh, look at the little yeah. messages I get from people, even when I deliver food to them. It drives me on to do more. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. And as I said, we here in their media and their maker are doing our bit. And we're hoping people like yourself, anyway, we won't leave it six months the next time because uh, we've been busy trying to get out. Well, our, our viewing figures in Ireland have gone up since, and then last we're tiling away despite the lockdown. Well, I'm certainly not surprised with that, Pat. You're, you're doing a fantastic job. And there, and fair play to you. September, it's it, it, a good few thousand people have watched it now, and they're still watching because it's up on our YouTube channel. By the way, yeah. all, the, all our shows are up on our YouTube channel for the lads, and uh, we have our fingers crossed to get an FM license, but we don't know if we'll actually get that. But hopefully, we will. Well, let's we'll hope so. Keep interviewing people like yourself can because it highlight that people can do some good no matter what it is in their own locality you know and it shows the power teamwork of the teamwork yeah. and people power can achieve anything i am convinced it can achieve anything so ken from this edition of Lear Confidential on Lear Medium. Delighted to have spoken to you again and you took time out. You can put your feet up if you can for a half an hour or so now. <laughs> Thanks very much, Pat. I appreciate that. And look, and, uh, the best the best of luck to, to yourself and all of your team there. It's all it's all pleasure, Ken. And uh, thank you. And uh, good morning to you now. And the best of luck in the future, Ken. And uh, we'll catch up with you again in a few weeks' time. Perfect. Thanks very much, Pat. Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye. Take care.